Can y'all believe we're about to be on our last talk of the night? It's been so amazing. Y'all have been seriously awesome this entire night. So we have something pretty special for you guys. Something that we've never done at any SIS ever, and this is our fifth year. So this is a pretty big deal. For our last talk, we're actually going to have two presenters. They're a duo. I know, it's pretty nice. So, your next presenters are Luke Hendon and Brianna Chapman. Luke is a fourth year student from Marietta, Georgia, studying international business and marketing, and he's involved with UGA Miracle, Relay for Life, International Student Life, and Greek Life. Brianna is a fourth year from Austell, Georgia, majoring in international affairs. She's been involved with the Arch Society, Relay for Life, Camp Kesem, Oasis Catolico, and Service Ambassadors. This duo is here to speak about creating an open dialogue in order to discuss race relations. Now, I don't want to be racist, but why can't I say the N-word? Why does all life matter even exist? Can I touch your hair? Can I borrow your privilege? And why? <laughs> <laughs> and why are you so good at dancing? Why don't y'all season your food? <laughs> <laughs> so, kind of awkward, right? But these questions are very real. We've all wanted to reach across the racial divide into insight into how other people think. For Luke to understand me, for me to understand you, and for you to understand the person next to you, we have to have these kinds of conversations. We have to ask deep questions that may be really awkward. So, all of this begins with an understanding that America is divided. The basic American experience is different based on your race. We can see it here, on this campus, in this room, in fact. Let's take a poll. Please raise your hand if you've ever been the only minority in your class, at your job, or in an organization. Have you ever been followed around a store because they thought you would steal something? Have you or someone you know been treated differently by the police for what seems no apparent reason? Okay, so pretty telling. For many of you and myself, these are things that we've never had to factor into our daily reality. But for everyone that raised their hand, this is an everyday occurrence. These are the people that we study, live, and work with. Yet so often, we're unaware or unable to understand this alternate version of America. Having these kinds of conversations allows for us to gain insight in what someone else lives like and how their alternate perspective and experience is in America. These conversations allow us to gain, alleviate ignorance that may exist within America and within our communities. Please know that having these conversations will not change the heart of a racist, but again, will alleviate ignorance that may exist. So these all begin with having the courage to ask a question or the willingness to facilitate an open discussion. For Brianna and I, this began on the other side of the world on a study abroad in Argentina. <laughs> as soon as we stepped off the plane, we realized the stark contrast in race. There were no black people in Argentina. So this reality, you know, even sitting in the parks in Buenos Aires, when people would walk up to us and guess our nationalities, apparently a pastime, <laughs> I would always get Russian or German or Swede, and, uh, and Brianna would always get siloed into Dominican or Brazilian. So, so, yeah, so these, these kind of occurrences in Argentina really pose questions for us. What the, like, what the minority experience was like in Argentina, and then how that translates into the minority experience back home in the United States. These surface level questions about what our study abroad was like devolved, or evolved into deeper conversations. For Link and I, these conversations didn't stop there, though. Once we came back home to the States, these conversations continued to spill over into my living room. In fact, my roommate was around for many of these conversations. Despite the fact that we had lived together for months, she had never been able to ask me this these kinds of questions because she was simply afraid. During one of our conversations, she finally mustered up the courage to tell me about a story of how her boss one day at work teased a woman because she was both black and afraid of dogs. Grace then asked me, 
<laughs> Grace then asked me, uh, are black people really afraid of dogs? I then had to explain to her that typically, generally black people are not afraid of dogs, but this idea stems from during the civil rights movement when black when protesters were attacked by police dogs because they were trained to do so. This idea is continually perpetuated into the types of questions that people have. Having these kinds of conversations allows for you to seek the depth and the stereotypes that surround the questions that we may really have. Now, what's the impact of these conversations? Well, beyond just bringing our study abroad group closer together, these conversations have the ability to change organizations and society. At the organizational level, we can look into companies. This summer in corporate America, my company decided to hold a town hall meeting in response to both the Dallas the Dallas police shootings, and the killings of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile. So in response, they had an open forum. People were, were able to share their perspectives on the current events and how it was affecting their psyche. They even got to come up on stage with an open mic and talk about their concerns, beliefs, hopes, and dreams for their America and, what's been, and how it was impacting them. By the end of the meeting, everyone in the room was in tears. But they also left with a better understanding of the people that were sitting next to them every day at work. Now, when we look at companies that facilitate this conversation, they're encouraging not only a culture of social inclusivity, but they also enable people to bring their true self to work. The implications can be seen on the societal level as well, especially in light of recent political changes. For instance, there's been a federal law passed that allows for employers to discriminate against those who have dreadlocks. You can understand how this would be directly detrimental to the black community as it's linked to their racial norms and heritages. Additionally, if you have friends who are possibly immigrants or minorities, you can understand how new policy changes and new laws can affect their daily livelihood. Additionally, having these kinds of conversations allows you to shape your perspective and gain new insight as you can understand the hurt and the root of the issues that exist. Having these kinds of conversations is not meant for you to shift your perspective and be completely aligned with one group over another, but rather create empathy in order to understand where they're coming from. So these conversations have power. They have the ability to open up communications and also build lines of empathy into understanding people better. They break down social stigmas and create real change in the organizations and like societal elements that they're touted for. So what can we do? First, ask the question. Don't be afraid to get awkward, but also be willing to facilitate these kinds of conversations. Two, go for depth. Look into the root of these questions and, understanding, and understand the beliefs that fuel them. And three, apply what you've learned to shift your perspective. Having these kinds of conversations and asking these questions allows you to understand one's impact on America and America's impact on them. Remember, going forward, that silly questions can lead to serious conversations. So start talking. Thank you.